Hi, I'm Bob. Let's solve the problems for Chapter 9 about the specification and data issues in the textbook Introductory Econometrics, a Modern Approach, the 7th edition by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. Let's look at the first problem. Since we have unrestricted and restricted models, we can compute the R-squared form F-statistic. It is 2.97 and its p-value is 0.054. We fail to reject the null hypothesis that the two squared terms are both zero at the 5% level. In other words, there is little evidence of functional form with specification at this significance level. We can also test for the functional form with specification by reset the regression specification error test. In Stata, we can use the OV test command to perform the reset test. Or we could do it manually. We obtain the fitted values and generate their squared and cubic terms. Then we add these polynomials to the original regression. Finally, we do the F-test for the significance of the polynomials in the expanded model. The reset gives a small F-statistic and a large p-value. We could not reject the null hypothesis that no polynomials are needed. There is no evidence of functional form with specification by reset. The difference in the F statistics between the OV test command and the manual procedure is due to the OV test command adding one more term, the fitted values, to the fourth power. Let's solve the second problem. For part 1, the coefficient on road A88 suggests that one more percentage point increase in the road in 1980A increases the road in 1990 by only 0.067 percentage points, holding other variables in the model fixed. It is practically small. It is also statistically insignificant at 10% level. The t-statistic is 1.26 and its p-value is 0.104. Adding the variable does not have much effect on the other coefficients. Let's find answers to problem 3. For part 1. The percentage of students eligible for the school lunch program is a sensible proxy for poverty because they are highly correlated. For part 2, Model 1 suffers from omitted variable bias, leading to an upward bias in the OLS estimate for the coefficient on log expenditure. To see that, we can write down the omitted variable bias formula. Beta 1 tilde is the coefficient on log expenditure in Model 1. Beta 1 hat is the coefficient on log expenditure in Model 2. 
beta 2 hat is the coefficient on lunch program in module 2, and delta 1 hat is the coefficient on log expenditure in the auxiliary regression of lunch program on log expenditure and log enrollment. Because beta 2 hat and delta 1 hat are negative, the bias is positive. Therefore, the coefficient on log expenditure in Model 1 is higher than that in Model 2. We can verify this relationship in Stata. We first estimate the model without the lunch program variable, Model 1, and obtain the Beta 1 tilde. Second, we estimate the model with the lunch program variable, Model 2, and obtain the Beta 1 hat and Beta 2 hat. Third, we run the auxiliary regression of the lunch program on the other two explanatory variables and obtain the delta 1 hat. Finally, we verify that the omitted variable bias formula holds. The spending effect on the mass pass rate in Model 2 is still statistically greater than zero at the 5% level, with a t-statistic of 2.55 and a p-value of 0.011. For Part 3, the passing rates are 0.13 percentage points lower if the school enrollment increases by 10%, other things equal. The effect is statistically significant at the 5% level against a two-sided alternative with a t-statistic of minus 2.16 and a p-value of 0.031. For part 4, if the students eligible for the school lunch program increase by 10%, the mass pass rate decreases by 3.24 percentage points, holding expenditures and enrollment fixed. The effect is statistically significant at the 1% level. For the last part, the R squared rises from 0.03 to 0.19 after adding the lunch program variable. The substantial increase in R squared is due to the high explanatory power of the lunch program variable. The school lunch program is a sensible proxy variable for poverty. It implies that poverty explains most variation in the outcome variable mass pass rate. In other words, the student's family background, like family income and parents' education, plays a more important role in the children's school performance than the school size and expenditure per student. Let's do problem 4. We write the observed hours equal to the actual hours plus the measurement error. The classical errors in variables assumption is that the measurement error is uncorrelated with the true unobserved variable. It is not likely to hold because for the children who do not watch TV, the measurement error is very likely to be zero. But for those who do watch TV, the measurement error is not zero. The measurement error and the actual hours are correlated. However, the classical errors in variable assumption is usually about the measurement error in the explanatory variables. For the measurement error in the outcome variable, as in this problem, we are concerned about whether the measurement error is correlated with all the explanatory variables in the model. If they are not correlated, then the ORS estimates are unbiased or consistent. If higher educated parents are more likely to accurately report their children's hours of television viewing, the ORS estimates are biased. Thank you for solving the problems with me. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.